Hello and welcome to a brand new video on the vestibulo-ocular reflex. So in this video what we're going to be discussing is a reflex that stabilizes our eyeballs, keeps them fixed in our gaze while our head is moving. And I want you to think a little of this kind of like a gyroscopically stabilized camera in a movie studio and why it doesn't shake around all the time when you might be moving it. Um, keeping that steady allows us to see what we're looking at very clearly. So this is what our eyes do, but it's going to use nerves, some crossing over information, a variety of nerves and nuclei that we need to learn about. So in this video, um, I will be focusing on these things. Uh, uh, first, we're going to look at what role our lateral semicircular canal, uh, specifically the lateral one, what it plays in this reflex, how it's going to stimulate, uh, initiate this reflex. So we're going to look at all the various nuclei in the brain. Remember, a nucleus is a collection of neuron cell bodies in the CNS. Um, then we're going to look at the neurons and how they go, and then we're going to look at how this overall affects our gaze, how our eyes will move as a result of the lateral semicircular duct movement itself. So the head moves, the eyeballs move to keep it steady. So uh, to do this, um, if you want to recreate this, if you will draw the following things out, I want to highlight some uh, what we're looking at. And we're going to start off with uh, just drawing a circle here. Um, I drew it out in, in PowerPoint because it was just easier for me to do. But this circle being a tube, this being our lateral semicircular ducts, we'll draw two of those. And then our vestibular nuclei, I just drew some circles representing where the nucleus will be. Off to the side here, we want our abducent nuclei. And then the two nuclei of the reticular formation. And then we're going to add our eyeballs. And that is all just to help us uh, understand where these neurons are going. Now remember that a nucleus is a collection of neuron cell bodies in the CNS. So we are in the brain. Uh, these portions are in the midbrain. Some of these parts are in the inner ear. Some of these parts are sitting in the midbrain. So uh, we're not going to necessarily worry about that. We're going to more so worry about uh, the nuclei themselves um, and how this is wired. So what we want to make sure we also understand is a couple um, important details uh, that we have to talk about is that there are going to be excitatory and inhibitory neurons inhibit and excitatory in green here. We're going to use that to be excitatory and um, these ideas will be necessary to understand what's going on. So red is going to be that a neuron is inhibiting uh, actions on a muscle, carrying inhibitory signals, where green is going to be excitatory signals. Think about it as stoplights and, and uh, uh, green lights in uh, red and green lights in traffic. So what we want to understand as we start this is first off let's look at where our head is moving now I want you to quickly test this on yourself which you can easily do if you go into look at a mirror and you look at yourself in the mirror and shake your head side to side you'll notice your eyeball stays relatively still um, able to lock on and it appears that your head is moving around your eye uh, not really what's happening but our head is moving and our eyeball is able to fix onto that so that if you're running and you're looking at something in the distance, you're not going to see it shaky. Um, I always say without this, everything's going to look like a J.J. Abrams movie with J.J. Shaky Cam. So what we want to imagine is that I've got my head moving and the head is looking towards the right. So I have turned to the right and I have got two lateral semicircular ducts. Now, we may remind ourselves that in the lateral semicircular ducts is a structure called the ampulla, and the ampulla has hair cells. 
Hair cells, remember, when they bend one direction, they become stimulated. And when they bend the other direction, they become inhibited. So you have one set of hair cells who will be stimulated depending on the direction that we rotate the head and the other set will be inhibited because they're going in the opposite direction. As you can see my arrows that turn to the right and my head turns to the right the rotational forces on each side are in the opposite directions so it will bend hair cells in the lateral semicircular ducts in the opposite directions creating one side stimulatory effect and the other side having an inhibitory effect. And that's very important that we keep that straight. So let's start here on our left side and we're going to have a neuron sending an inhibitory signal and let us make sure I put a neuron cell body in the middle as this is a bipolar neuron. And then let's take over here the other thing and we're going to draw an excitatory neuron going out there and this is a bipolar neuron and they're going to the vestibular nuclei. So these are uh, neurons from the vestibulocochlear nerve, vestibular branch coming in so this would be cranial nerve number eight branches uh, information from cranial nerve 8 coming into vestibular nucleus and then what is going to happen let's follow the inhibitory nerve first this neuron is going to pick up and it's going to cross over to the abducent nucleus on the opposite side it's going to decansate and as it crosses over to that opposite one we're going to keep him there and the same thing is going to happen here. We're going to have a crossing over of information where it goes to the abducent nucleus on the other side. Now the abducent nuclei are rather interesting is because there will be two types of nerves that come out. Um, there will be some, uh, half of them will cross over and some will not. So let's take one that does not cross over. We're going to take a neuron all the way here to control the lateral rectus of the right eye. Now this is an inhibitory one, so I'm going to make sure that the lateral rectus, um, I'm going to make sure the lateral rectus muscle stays relatively short here. And we can see this would be lateral rectus. It's not in, it's inhibiting it. It's not going to make it contract. The other neuron that's going to leave here is going to go over to the opposite side of the reticular formation of the brain. Um, and it's going to go over here to the reticular formation, which is an important part of the brain. A lot of things occur in the reticular formation. There is a lot going on here. And this portion of reticular formation that we want to talk about deals exclusively with the uh, reflex that we're talking about. So this neuron crossed over. Now this neuron is going to go to the medial side, uh, to the medial rectus of the left eye. Now remember this is an inhibitory so the medial rectus is not going to be stimulated in this case either. So this is going to keep the lateral rectus of the right eye and the medial rectus of the left eye inhibited and not permitted to contract. But when we take this excitatory neuron and take it to the left eye, the lateral rectus of the left eye will be made to contract as it is receiving an excitatory stimulus, he will contract. Also, a neuron will leave here, cross over to the opposite reticular formation and this neuron will come in and make the medial rectus of the right eye also contract. Now what we're getting ready to see here is the end result of this, which is a fascinating thing. Please make note that we're turning to the right. Our head turned to the right. The muscles are pulling the eyeballs in this direction. So the eye, eyes, look left 
In the opposite direction, the head turns. Now, this is the reason why. We have the crossing over of a lot of information. We have excitatory information crossing over, um, going to our vestibular nuclei and crossing over to the opposite uh, abducent nucleus. And then from there, two bits come out. One goes on the same side, and one goes to the other side. So this decansation allows me to be able to control my opposite sides of my eye in the unique way to turn it, um, opposite to the head's rotation. So this is what happens when I turn to the right, my eyes will look left in this particular reflex. And this is all reflexive due to muscles controlling these. Now, remember, if it's a somatic reflex, that's control of the somatic skeletal muscle tissues. If it is a visceral reflex, remember that smooth muscle, cardiac muscle glands, and adipose. So this would be an example as well as a cranial reflex as it's processed in the brain and using cranial nerves to carry it out. So a great example of a cranial reflex if you're studying reflexes. So I hope this makes sense using a color code. But what we want to do is take the same color code we've got here and now let's take it and go the other direction with it. We looked what happened when I turned right. Now let's look what happens when I turn left. My head now turns to the left. So with the head turning to the left, we know the eyes are going to want to move to the right. That is the goal of this to stabilize it so that if I do this proportional to head turn, my eyes stay steady. This is how I can look inside of a mirror, shake my head left and right rapidly, and notice that my eyeballs don't move. Well, they are moving. They are just moving directly proportional. If it doesn't, this can mean some sort of issues going on with this pathway and assessing our midbrain. Now, these are very difficult tests to do. Typically, very special labs are needed with some very specialized equipment, but it is something used to assess brain death. So let's look at what happens here. So again, we're going to have our same color code. We're going to use red color to represent our stop or inhibit, uh, an inhibit response, inhibitory. We're going to use green to reference an excitatory response. I'm going to say excite. And let's start again on the same side that we did, but this time it's completely backwards. Now, because of the direction of head tilt, the uh, uh, ampulla um, will have a different signal sent from each side. Remember, whenever the hair cells are bent one direction, they may be stimulated. When they bend the other direction, they're inhibited. And it has to do with the direction they bend in response to the kinocilium in the hair cells themselves. So this time we're going to start with an excitatory response on the left side. So a neuron being ex a neuron being excitatory here will come out him being a bipolar neuron. He will send an excitatory signal here and there will be an inhibitory signal sent from here. And this is where the same kind of things will continue on, where I will cross over to the opposite abducent nucleus. I will cross over to the opposite abducent nucleus. The abducent nuclei will have two neurons that will leave, one of those um, being the abducent nerve, cranial nerve number six. I know I haven't mentioned that yet. Uh, kind of neglected to do that in the first part. We'll come out to the lateral rectus of the right eye. And this is a excitatory, stimulatory signal. So we want to make sure we know that that muscle is contracting and pulling backwards turning the eye, of course, and there will be the same uh, thing kind of going on here as before, where a neuron crosses over, and that will send a signal excitatory to the medial rectus of the left eye, which will also be excitatory and contracting the eye that way. 
And if we follow the inhibitory neuron signal, that will either go that will go to the lateral rectus, which is maintained as inhibited, and also that will cross over to this side, and we will pick that up and send an inhibitory signal here. And what will happen is the eyeball will turn to the right. We will have a right eye turn based on the fact that the medial rectus muscle of the left eye is contracted and the lateral rectus muscle of the right eye contracts. This will pull the eyeballs to the right to counteract a left turn of the head. So eyes turn right. So there will be a right eye look. The eyes look right. And this is opposite to this. The eyes look left and the eyes look right um, in this case. So uh, we're going to say eyes look right just to keep it consistent with what we saw before. So in order to do that, now remember this was uh, uh, cranial nerve number um, uh, six, the abducent nerve, um, abducent being one of the most, uh, one of the nerves that control the eyeball. This being cranial nerve number three, the other one, along with trochlear, all nerves that control the eyeball. But here we only see two nerves. And just as a reminder that this muscle's contracting, this one's contracting, pulling it back to create the eyes turn to the left as a result of a right turn. So I hope this uh, video really helped us to understand this pathway, uh, a complex phenomenon that really is simple to understand once we look at and understand what's going on in the brain. I may have to redo this one again just because I always want to make it as clear and as good as possible, but I was so interested to do a video on this, something I've been passionate about trying to do for a while. I really love revisiting these topics that I haven't seen in quite some time myself. I haven't looked at it since I was a student and haven't drawn it out myself in a long time. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video series and some of the cranial reflexes that I've been doing uh, and my neuropathways. Um, series. Uh, I really uh, hope that you guys have some great ideas for things you would like to see me do in the future. If you would like to see me do more videos on these topics, please let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, hit the bell button for more notifications. Let me know what you would like to see in future videos. I'm so excited to try to do more for you, and I hope this helps you understand things in the future. Um, and if you just let me know. Hit that like button. Let me know that I'm doing something you like to see. Thank you so much, and have a great day.